Hey everyone, it's Sarah and today I am back with another subscriber requested video. So I recently did a video all about jasmine fragrances in my collection and somebody asked that I do the same thing but just talk about tuberose fragrances. So here we are. I don't have a ton of tuberose, I've definitely got enough. So I'm gonna jump right in. So the first one that we're gonna talk about is Stella McCartney uh, Stella Pop or is it just Pop? Stella McCartney Pop? <laughs> I think it's just Stella McCartney pop. Either way, this is basically, I think this is just two notes. It's synthetic tuberose and synthetic sandalwood. So I love it. It's like a really light bubblegummy tuberose. It almost smells, it almost smells a little bit fruity but it's not fruity. It's just a really light bubblegummy tuberose. And then the synthetic sandalwood, which is really, really light. It doesn't, I don't really get sandalwood from it at all, but somehow the combination, the combination of the two notes, it, it's just beautiful. It's fun, it's youthful smelling, it's super easy to wear. In fact, I probably should have included this in my safe signature scents video because I think that this would be a completely safe signature scent. So yeah, it's, um, this is one that anybody could just go out and buy and it could become an everyday fragrance, like an easy to reach for everyday fragrance. It's gonna be a people pleaser, it's gonna be just an easy no brainer, you know, spray it on and head out to work. I think this one would be great for healthcare workers as well. It's not super, um, it's not as like light and inoffensive as maybe Pure Grace, but it's still pretty, it's still very inoffensive and I think it's, I don't wanna say it's skin-like, but it's inoffensive enough that I think a healthcare worker could get away with it. Um, it's, it's a great fragrance, it's beautiful. It's definitely the lightest and most different smelling tuberose that I've got in my collection because it does not smell like a traditional tuberose. It's totally different smelling than traditional tuberose. I love it. It's an amazing fragrance though. I just love Stella McCartney fragrances, kind of like Chloe. I've just always gotten along really, really well with Stella McCartney fragrances. So anyways, that is Stella McCartney pop. Okay, next we have a Steve McQueen fragrance. This is Steve McQueen. This is the Parfum version. So I think it's like the most kind of intense version because all of the fragrances that come in bottles that look like this, um, there is a white one, which I used to have, but it smelled so similar to this, I ended up decluttering it. And then there's another one that has pink liquid, and I think it's got like a black, um, it's got a label with black writing on it, I believe, and I think it's got a black lid, but it's in a bottle just like this. I think it smells very similar to this as well. I haven't smelled that one, but I am pretty sure that it smells like all of these, and these are all tuberose fragrances. Oh, this one is, this is sweet and intense. It's a very sweet, intense tuberose. I think this one might have some like pink pepper in the top, so you get a little bit of a kind of warm pepperiness, but it's mostly just a sweet, traditional smelling like I was also gonna I was almost gonna say ripe but not ripe um, really like an in full bloom sweet bubblegummy rich tuberose if you like fragrances like um, Madonna the first Madonna fragrance the one in the in the white bottle if you like fragrances like that or if you like um, Robert Piguet Fraca if you like L'Entre D from Givenchy, you would like this fragrance. It's very similar to all of those perfumes. It's a very straightforward, very sweet, bubblegummy, strong tuberose. It's beautiful, I love it. It's the only fragrance in my collection that I have that's just like a straight up strong tuberose an unmistakable tuberose. Okay, next I've got a Guerlain fragrance. This is Guerlain Mahora, and this is one of my favorite bottles in my collection. I absolutely love this bottle. It's very like, 
1920s Art Deco. I love everything about it. I love the gold on the front. I love the lid with the little, oh, I love everything about it. So the tragedy about this perfume when Charlotte was really little, I mean, I think she was like two, um, she dropped this and broke the sprayer. Well, yeah, the part that sticks up out of here that the little sprayer like fits down onto, it snapped. So thankfully I can still, if I just like position it over that, I can still spray it. So I can still use the perfume, thankfully. But, but yeah, it is broken and wow, I just made a mess. And that is sad. But this is what I like to refer to as like a vintage, like a vintage smelling I love it. It's like a vintage smelling beachy perfume. I mean, if you can imagine a beachy perfume from like the, gosh, I would almost say like the 70s maybe. Um, I don't remember, I don't know when this one came out. I'll, I'll have it on the screen for you, like what year this came out. But this reminds me of yeah, or even something from the 80s. It smells, it's very vintage smelling. And this is one, it's got tuberose in it. You definitely smell the tuberose, but it's not like the McQueen at all. It's not an overpowering, really distinct, heavy tuberose. This one, you can smell the tuberose in it, but it's got a lot of other things going on. And this one really does smell more like beachy. It almost smells like a vintage sand and sable and sand and sable is kind of vintagey smelling, but this one almost smells like a vintagey, almost less floral sand and sable. Oh, I love this one. I love it. it. This one's hard for me to describe because they really don't make perfumes like this anymore. And I absolutely love it. This one would not be for everybody. This would not be safe because it is, this one is like heavily vintage smelling, but I absolutely love it. And I love the tuberose in this one because it's, again, it's not overpowering and it blends beautifully with the fragrance without taking the fragrance over. So anyways, that is Guerlain Mahora, such a beauty and oh, just one of my favorite bottles in my collection. Okay, next we've got Twilly. I think that this might be the easiest tuberose that I've got in my collection. Um, Hermes Twilly is, I think this one, ooh, does this have ginger in it? I don't remember what this has in it besides tuberose. I always just think of it as a tuberose fragrance, but this one is, this is a really light, easy to wear. It's not a heavy tuberose. It's got some citrus in the top. I almost get some kind of a spice. Almost got like a, it's really bright smelling. It's not overly sweet. It's fresh. It's more of a fresh tuberose. It's not overly sweet. It's not bubblegummy smelling. It's like a fresh, very slightly sweet, citrusy, bright tuberose fragrance. I love it. This is again, probably the easiest to wear tuberose in my collection. This would be a great beginning or like beginner's tuberose for somebody or for somebody that really doesn't like a sweet overpowering tuberose. This might work for you. This is a really easy one to wear and I absolutely love it. This one, um, I can get maybe six or so hours out of this. It doesn't, it's not a horrible performer, but it's not the best in the world either. Um, I haven't worn this one for a long time though, so maybe I'll leave this one out and I'll give this a test and I'll put this in my next What I Wore Last Week video so I can let you guys know how this performs. It's been a long time since I've worn this one. I wanna say I remember getting maybe six or so hours out of it. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful tuberose fragrance. So that is Twilly from Hermes. Okay, next we've got good old Narcotic V or Narcotic Venus from Nazamato. This one is a really, bubblegummy smelling tuberose. It's like a sweet candy-like tuberose. It's not, so the McQueen is really rich and fragrant and I wanna, I keep, the word ripe keeps coming to my head. But you know when a flower gets, is so, what is the word that I'm looking for? 
when a flower is so in bloom, like right before it's about to die, especially a beautiful white floral, like if you can picture like a gardenia, when a gardenia bush, um, it'll be in bloom for a really long time, but then when it's starting to kind of go out of season or the blooms are about to fall off, they kind of start to turn brown. That's what, and they get really, really fragrant at that point and they, their, their scent almost starts to change. That's what the tuberose in McQueen reminds me of. It reminds me of a really, I, I keep wanting to say ripe. Ripe is not the word. Somebody tell me in the comments the word that I'm looking for. Um, it's like really, really in bloom. It's near the end of its lifespan. But that's what tuber the tuberose in this reminds me of. Like it's, it's going, going. It's so fragrant because it's almost about to start turning brown. It's so sweet and rich. That's what this one is like. Narcotic V is more, this one is more of a tuberose that just bloomed. It just started to open up. It's really fresh smelling. It's sweet. It's fresh. It's a fresh tuberose bloom. It just opened up and you're just starting to get that really fragrant bloom. It's sweet, but not overly sweet. It's definitely not at the browning stage where the McQueen is almost at. Does that make sense? I hope I'm making sense, but it's just, it's beautiful. It's a sweet, pretty straightforward tuberose fragrance, but bubble gummy and a little bit more fresh. It's, this one is somewhere in between these two. Um, this is like so fresh, it almost, it smells like tuberose, but it almost, it's not, it's like a really light watery tuberose. And then you've got Narcotic V, and then you've got a really like fragrant, dense, sweet tuberose, like the McQueen. Um, Narcotic V is right in the middle. It's a fun, bubblegummy, sweet, fresh, beautiful tuberose and it, this thing lasts forever. You're gonna smell like this oil until you wash it off. These Nazimato oils are powerful. They're nuclear. They're amazing. They're worth the price. I know they're super expensive, but they're worth the price because you only need a few dots of these um, to smell like this for days, literally days. So anyways, that is Nazimato Narcotic V. Next, we have a good old 80s, bomb, beach bomb. This is Sand and Sable from Cody. I just bought a little one of these because I love it. I love Sand and Sable. It's, it reminds me of the 80s because it's an 80s beach fragrance. This is gonna sound crazy, but this is kind of a peepee -pee smelling white floral with the tuberose being very dominant. Um, and when I say that, it's got like a urine quality to it. And I know that sounds disgusting and like, why would I wanna smell like that? That fades. It's just when you very first spray it, there's something about the white florals and it's always smelled like that. Even back in the 80s, it smelled like that. Um, I'm sure it's because there was some kind of an animal note in it maybe back then that is not in it now, or it might be a synthetic form of it now, but I absolutely love this. But that, it's just when you initially spray it, that kind of pee-pee note or aspect goes away um, after maybe the first 30 seconds or so, and it never translates on skin, or it doesn't mine anyways. But this is, I love this. It's a very vintage, very 80s style beach, like beachy white floral with the tuberose being the most prominent white floral, and I adore it. it. This one is not the most expensive smelling perfume, that's for sure. It's a shadow of what it used to be. Um, Sand and Sable used to be, oh my gosh, it was like the epitome of the beach when I was a kid. It just smelled amazing. It's, like I said, it pales in comparison to what it used to smell like, but I still love it and I can I still I can still smell it. Like it still smells, you know, what I remember it smelling like. I adore it. So anyways, that is Cody Sand and Sable. 
And then last but not least, we have got this one here. This is the original Ju Juicy Couture. I love this perfume. This is, this is a really modern smelling tuberose. This is a super classic smelling fragrance. Yeah, really classic. It's a little bit more heavier than the Stella Pop, but it's nowhere near the McQueen. It's really, it's somewhere in between the Stella Pop and a Twilly from Hermes. It's somewhere in between those two. I think the Tuberose and the Hermes is even a little bit more prominent than it is in the, in Juicy, but it's really beautiful. It's a super easy to wear Tuberose. It's, again, I think this would be a great, like, starter Tuberose for somebody or for people that don't love a heavy, really distinct tuberose note, I think you might still be able to tolerate this one. It is tuberose, but it's a super easy to reach for tuberose. It's sweet, it's not too tuberose-y, if that makes sense. It's perfect, I love this one. I think that this is such a classic fragrance and I forget that I have this and I very rarely ever wear it. In fact, I'm gonna leave it out because I need to wear this because I forget that I even have this one. Um, and it's such a beautiful perfume. I This one is timeless, in my opinion. I think that this is an amazing fragrance that really doesn't get enough love in the fragrance community. I think that still after all of these years, this is a beautiful tuberose perfume. Beautiful. Without being too much of a heavy tuberose. Um, last time I wore this, it did not perform very well on me, so... Again, I'll, I'll wear this this week and I'll put it in my next What I Wore Last Week video and let you guys know how this one does. This is a new formulation. I've only had this bottle for, um, I had a bottle of this, I've had, this is my second bottle. I had another bottle of this before. Um, this is a replacement bottle that I bought. Oh, I've probably had this for four or five years. So it's not like brand spanking new, but it's also not like an old bottle. So, and I want to say I don't, I remember this not performing super well for me. So anyways, that is Juicy Couture, just Juicy Couture. And that is going to be it, guys. Those are all of the two. I'm sure I have more than that that I maybe didn't find or didn't include, but those are the tuberose fragrances that I know are very much tuberose fragrances that I have in my collection. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.